Hello, it's Sarah. I'm working on a wood burning piece. Do what you love. And I figured I'd turn on the camera. I'm going to float. So I'm using my angle brush. I have my water basin here, and I'm going to use dark burnt umber, traditional burnt umber. The key to floating is to get the balance between the water and the paint right on the brush. So I've already gone into my water and I'm going to blot. There's a lot of water in this brush particularly. Also, you'll have to get used to the brush. I have lots of different brushes that I float with. Um, big ones, little ones, they're all angles, but you can float with flats. Um, anywho, the key is so I'm going to corner load just a little bit right on the tip there and you want a palette um, a paper palette that has the it's like um, smooth it's like a waxy surface and I'm just going to put the paintbrush down and go back and forth I don't want to paint on this end I want to keep that just water and lately I've gotten to be a much sloppier floater um, and when I say that I mean I don't I'm not as worried about it as I used to be and it although maybe I'm just better at it I also want to show you that you can pivot the brush as well because when you put this down on the surface it leaves a line right there the water stopped there so it what you would do is you have to pivot the brush and tuck it up against the edge just tuck that water and then you can see the bubbles where's my mop I just had it the mop is used to kind of pick up the water so when you think mop I used to beat the like I used to you can also push the color for, forward and kind of or pull it out a little more with the mop this is a dry brush you don't put this in water so I would recommend a mop and this is the Maxine mop it's um, Maxine Thomas I have a small one this one I just wanted to see if you could read it any better not really it's Maxine's mop so again I go into water blot on my paper towel corner load and then I kind of put the paint down so I just took that paint and I put it there and then I kind of just walk in and out of it and you can see all the bubbles so I'm gonna blot again just kind of blot and then go pick up the water and the paint and I think we're good now I'm gonna come over to my piece and I just want to do some background shading. I used to try and do uh, a float like in one line. I know I'm uh, zoomed in so I have to remember that but now I'm a pity patter. Also this surface is not base coated. It is just it's got a spray coat of like a matte varnish but um, you can still see how the wood is kind of sucking the paint. I don't know. It's a porous surface. So, But what I want to do is just create shadows behind the, the words and stuff to give them, to ground them onto the piece. That's my thinking anyway. So I'm sticking the color up in the H and then I'm walking it down and across. So it stays the darkest here, and then I kind of walk it down into the water area. And I'm just going to do that all over. This is a pattern that I got out of a coloring book. I'm going to go back up a little because I'm too far. The other thing is I like strong color. Um, I consider myself a heavy hand, so for newbies at this you don't need to do it as dark as I do start out light and you can always go back and add a 
another coat, another float, a little bit darker color. Um, so take your time with it and you know it's yours it's your this is a technique that I'm teaching you that I love but there's more than one way to get the result that you need um, I just I don't know I feel like the way I'm doing my best to teach you to tell you how to do this um, I want to do a little bit in here to separate that W and the H. And I just decided to do it with this brown because I'm going to do all the other painting of the piece with bright color. And so I'm just trying to, I don't want to lose the fact that it's a wood burned piece. So I've been trying to continue or keep that wood tone look. Oh my god, I just love it. Love it. I'm going to go a little in here. And I keep going back to this runway because this brush happens to hold a lot of water. It's beaten up. It's an American painter. I got it at AC Moore years ago. And I, I mean, look at it. It's disgusting. But it still does the, the job. So this is a, um, a wood, basswood canvas. It has like a bit of a um, two inch lip on it. So I'm just holding my hand here so that I can rest it. Because um, I couldn't, I had nothing to rest my hand on anyway. So look, I have bubbles again, so I'm just going to blot a little bit more. And so I, it's the balance. I just keep going back and forth from paint to water until it feels like it's moving enough, it's dark enough. I'm going to blot a little more, and then I'm going to go. When you're doing um, a curved area, Let's go down and do love. That looks really good for, for to show you this technique. Um, I wanted to try and show you how I'm going to turn my brush. Mm, I don't know. I think let's do this little area of the Y right here. And I'll show you what I mean. So... I'm going to swoop in. So I don't just put my brush down. I want it to connect on that line so that it doesn't leave a line, a water line there. And I'm going to and I'm just sticking the corner in there and I'm going to tuck the the water up against the edge so it doesn't have any like just a, a strange water line in the middle of the the dark color. And for this, like I swoop down, like you swoop and then start to walk it up. And I'm just filling that area. Um, I could do a little bit on the U. If it doesn't feel like the paint is moving, you just need more water. Um, all right, like I said, let's do that love. I really like a lot of paint, you guys. I can't, I can't stop myself. Listen, I've been doing this for over 20 years. I want to say, I want to say 20 years I've been doing this. Since 89, maybe 99, oh not, maybe almost, oof, I don't know how long. <laughs> I, I'm trying to think, I, I have p pieces around here with the date 1989. That can't be possible. Look how dark. It's because I like it like that. I don't know why that's a little dark. So I, I can either blot, just blot the water off, and it'll take, it took that much color, so not much. But I like it like that. And then inside this little part of the O right here, even though I'm still using this big brush, maybe I'll lift off a few of the um, bristles at the end. Um, I need some in here. Let's 
see I'm off the piece. It'll connect. I'm going to go under too. Like in that little where the O. I have so much water on my brush. And I'm going to do this around everything to kind of give the, like I said, to ground the, the lettering onto the surface. It's sort of, um, a lot of decorative painting pieces uh, have you do this before you start painting. See, I kind of ran out of something there, just stopped. I think it just takes practice. Uh, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time and I remember when I first started uh, floating, it wasn't all uh, a bowl of cherries or, you know, uh, it was frustrating and, but I kept at it and um, you can always take it off, you guys. Like right, this piece specifically because it's on a wood burning, it's not as easy for me to take it off the surface because, like I said, it is going into the wood a little bit. But if you've base coated underneath there and your piece is sealed, you can take it off either with a wet wipe real quick or just a Q-tip like I do. And um, try again if you really hate it. But for the most part, the idea is to just get it done, get it on there, and look at the piece as a whole. Don't f just look at one float that you did. It's, it's the whole thing will come together at the end, you know? Um, so I hope you don't give up on it. You have to keep, keep at it. And little by little, it'll start to click. You'll start to understand what's, what it is that you're trying to do or what, hmm, not what it is that you're trying to do. I know you know what you're trying to do, but it'll, it'll go from your brain to your hand, <laughs> you know. Mm, you'll be able to uh, tell your hand what you, anyway, I don't know what I'm saying. It's late. <laughs> um, so, but that's it. That's really, I just wanted to come on real quick. I'm going to do a video tomorrow and share what um, I've been up to. I'm busy in the craft room. I've been doing a lot of stuff, a lot of projects. I think I'm going to put some in here. And right here. And I'm going to paint right over those little circles because um, I know that I'm going to fill them in. I'm going to need some See, really, there should be a light source, so I, I should just be putting all my shadows to the right or to the left, but I've already put them all over the place. And that's part of my um, newness to designing, because I'm used to doing other people's work. So, it, in other words, in the pattern pack, it would tell me exactly where to float, and I didn't really think about why. I was just following the direction. So now that I'm starting to do oops, some of my own designs or like this is just from a coloring book. I traced it and put it on here. I'm just kind of winging it and doing whatever makes me happy. You know, what, what my eye wants to do. That's all. And it's for me. Um, so that's another big part of it. Don't, you're not going to be judged and don't be kind to yourself. Give yourself credit for trying and give yourself credit um, for those little improvements that you make and for finishing projects. Um, 
and not given up on yourself. That's what I think I've come to find out now is, is the most important part of my creative journey is to share what I know with you guys, but also tell you that it isn't, you know, it's not that important that you get it right. It's that you do it at all, you know, and that you're just having fun. Just use colors that make you happy and enjoy the process. Enjoy the journey. And because I love learning new things, like when I start to get something, it's so exciting for me. I've gotten so much better at wood burning, but I just can't seem to um, shade the way I'd like to with the wood burner. So that's why I'm doing it with um, paint because I know how to do it with paint. So instead of frustrating myself with the wood burner and keep messing up pieces, I get out my paintbrush and I just do what I know how to do and have fun. So, and, and you know, I won't, I won't give up on the um, shading with the uh, wood burner, but I'm not going to get so frustrated by it that I, um, that I give it up. You know what I mean? So I'm going to keep going back to it little by little. And I'm waiting for this book. Her name is Manisa. I can't think of her last name. I pre-ordered it and I sent away for um, a signed copy and it should be here either to maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday, I think, or Saturday. This weekend it's coming. Um, so I'm super excited about that and I hope that I'll get some insight because a lot of the wood burning videos that I see on YouTube and stuff, they don't really, they're not telling me what I need to hear, evidently, to get, I mean, yeah, I know, I, I should probably just practice and practice and practice. I'm impatient. Um, anywho, um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to that, but in the meantime, I'm just going to do, I guess I got a sheet around this side too. Let me do around the heart. And see how I turn the piece, I turn my brush. And I had so much water on the pe on the brush that it just walked all the way around. And it's already looking cool. But when I add the color, oh baby, it's going to look so good. I'm going to go down into a little bit smaller brush. And this is a stiffer brush as well. Not that one. Just so that you can see, that one is such a mush. It's a mush. You know what I mean? Like it has, it's so buttery. It's like butter. Um, and what I mean by that is it, it's flowy and blendy. This is a little stiffer bristle. Um, it's the same brand. It's a smaller version, but it's not worked in as much. And I mean, maybe they changed the way they made it since I got it, but, um, and it's a little smaller. So I'm going to do this one and I'm going to show you the, I'm going to just try and keep it small in here. See it splits. So, and it's not holding nearly as much water. That's why I end up going back to that old standby. And I'm a pity patter. Well, I've gotten to be a pity patter. Yeah, it's frustrating when the brush doesn't do what you want it to do. So, maybe you need a new brush. Don't keep forcing it. If, it's, if the brush isn't working, you know, it's okay to say, yeah, you're not working for me, brush. I need a different one. And uh, don't give up. I'm going to go down. I got to go back to here. This is the other. This is my other brush. Let me try this one. It might work a little better. I'm going to go down this Y. Still stiff. They're both really stiff. Oh, this one's a little better. It's not splitting. 
Um, let's see. I want to go. I'm just going to. See how I, I want to start, but I, I kind of want to start like this. I just. Mm, see, that's not working. I probably should have started over here. Not enough water. See how I just can't get it to do what I want. So I'm going to go back to my mush brush that I love. This brush just, I wish, I, I'm going to work on a really good brush review for you guys to give you really good suggestions because this is so, this is my fave. I've had it forever as you can tell by looking at it. It's just so soft and ugh, flowy and I can just really get the results that I want and that's why you know I stick with it. So I'm going to go in here. I'm running out of water. So now it's really gotten dark, the piece. I think I got carried away, but um, that is what I wanted to share with you guys. I just wanted to share that, and I got to go to bed. And then tomorrow, I will let you guys in on what I've been up to working on lots of different things see I just don't have enough water and I'm out of paint too I'm probably tired My brush is drying out. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. That is what it looks like. It's a mess for now, but I'm gonna put some color on there and man, it is gonna look popping, I hope. All right, you guys, that's it. Thanks for watching.